So there's a few different things I think I have time to show you. And I think you can easily follow along. So go ahead and start a 10 by 10 canvas or a 12 by 12 canvas. Um, I'm going with 12 by 12. I always use the sRGB that's right under the P3 profile. So if you go, when you're starting a canvas, you can select the color profile. I always use this one that's right under P3. I, that works really well for Spoonflower, which is where I put my stuff. And um, I heard that P3, somewhere I heard that it's more for viewing online, um, specifically like Apple products. So I don't know. It, it ends up having problems if you're using your art back and forth in other programs like Affinity Designer, the colors will get a little bit different. So if you switch back and forth, to keep that in mind. Um, go ahead and go to the wrench tool and to drawing guide, edit drawing guide. And we're just gonna put the 2D grid to max because we need to know where those center lines are. If you've ever watched any of my seamless repeat classes on Skillshare, this will be familiar to you. So this is gonna essentially be kind of where the canvas is cut. And in this first step, we need to make sure we have everything we want along those lines because those will become the edges and we won't be able to edit them later. The other thing that the 2D grid is useful for is the symmetry, um, the, the actual straight lines that you can do. So tap a layer and tap drawing assist so that it's on, on this layer. Um, since either Procreate 5X or Procreate 5, um, it's been a while and it's not fixed yet, the snapping tools for straight lines is not accurate. So if you draw a straight line and you let it snap straight and you put your finger down, it looks vertical or horizontal. It's not. So this 2D grid is the best way to get vertical and horizontal lines. Even the 45 degree angles, the snapping is not accurate. So um, Procreate knows about it and they're working on it, but I just tested it recently and it's still a problem. And it's very slight, but it, it does make a difference with repeat patterns. Anytime you go off the edge with a repeat pattern, it has to match up. So normally we're gonna, um, if we're doing a design that we're not going off the edge, we're just gonna try to get as close to as we can to these four spots. But for right now, I'm gonna show you a design where we do go off the edge. So go to a brush um, that's a monoline. So, okay, um, go to calligraphy and monoline, but go into it and go to Apple Pencil, or no, Properties, and increase your brush size. Mine's probably higher than the default brush so that you can go to a really big size. I'm gonna turn my interface, um, where's my press? I'm gonna turn this lighter. I think that's easier for Instagram. Um, okay, so any color palette you want. I was playing with some sherbet colors <laughs> earlier. And you can see now I, my brush gets really big. I'm gonna hold up. How do we get to the 2D grid part? Somebody's asking. So you go to the wrench tool and you go to canvas, turn on the drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and then it's right here. And then just max out your grid size because um, you'll need it maxed out later. We don't need it at this second, but we will for other ones. All right, so for now we're just practicing. Just pick some random colors. And we're gonna do uh, some, some random lines. If you go off the edge over here with pink, you're gonna to wanna to come over here with pink too, and approximately half and half, so that those are gonna join later and you want them to be somewhat similar in width to the other lines that you have going on. So I am just adding some lines. I'm not making them too thick, just because I want to, um, uh, have the swirls in my design 
not have to be big. So um, to capture all the colors right here, I'd have to make the swirl really big, right? If I made a swirl really small, it's just gonna capture a little bit here. All right, and you can do this um, horizontally and vertically. We're just gonna start with a simple way here. I'm gonna pause really quick. Yep, um, watch it. Uh, yep, Matthew, uh, thank you. Yeah, it'll be on um, IGTV if you missed it. And um, it's, it's pretty fun and you can pick any color scheme you want. I know color's a thing <laughs> for Matthew. Um, so we're gonna blur it. I like to blur it. You can play around with it later to see if you like to blur. Um, so go to the little adjustments tool and go to blur, the whole layer. And I don't know, it's up to you. I like some white showing. So I'm at about 15%. You could go a little higher. All right, so that's kind of your setup. So when this repeats, this pink will join this pink and the bottom here will join the top here. And because we used those super straight lines specifically with the monoline brush, um, those will join. And even if you don't blur it, those will join. So it has to be monoline because now we know that each stripe is the exact same thickness or width as it is, um, you know, the top and the bottom are the same. So it has to be monoline. And not only does it have to be monoline, there's other brushes that are the same width, but they have some varying opacities. So it might be darker up here and lighter down here, and that doesn't work. So that monoline is a nice one to use. Um, now we need to just go into the liquify tool and I've just been playing around with the twirl right and twirl left. I keep distortion down, momentum down, momentum just kind of makes it keep going after you lift up your pencil, but I need to have more control than that. And I don't really know what pressure does. <laughs> I haven't really noticed much of a difference. So, um, I keep it high. Um, distortion, um, you can play around. I'm, I'm not going to explain all of that. This is just about the repeat patterns itself. Um, and the biggest thing you need to focus on right now at this first step is um, these midlines right here and never ever touching the edge or letting the swirl pull things over here with the solid pink line. It wouldn't be as big of a deal. But if, if these got pulled left or pulled right, then they won't line up with the bottom. So I'm just gonna put it on twirl right and let's just start with 50-ish percent. And you can see I'm too close to the edge and it's starting to pull those colors that are up against the edge. And that will make them not line up with the matching parts at the bottom. So just undo and come a little bit further away. So I like to get pretty close to these four points and then filling in the rest um, with uh, whatever sizes. This smaller size is a little bit easier to control. You can twirl as much or as little as you want. And I'm just kind of going back and forth between left and right. I'm looking under my pencil here to see that the pink is still solid pink. I haven't pulled the pink over. I don't even know if you can pull the pink over. All right, so now I've got those super important spots. Those are the most important spots. Um, anytime you're close to the edge, you have to be super careful. Now I'm gonna go bigger and get one here that's kind of overlapping my midlines because this is the only time I can do anything that's gonna be touching those midlines. That's why we turned the grid on. I don't want these super next to each other, so I might go down a little bit. So they're at least kind of at a little angle. It's, it's really mesmerizing, <laughs> super fun to do. Um, and just play, so just you're just playing with kind of filling up those, those midlines as much as you want at this point, because you can't do it later. I know I keep repeating myself, we don't need corner marks. Um, let's see, if, you're, if you haven't taken my classes, 
you um, then you don't know that I use a, a little trick for uh, marking the corners before I duplicate this layer um, but that is only because most of the time we don't have color going all the way to the edge and you need to have color going all the way to all four edges in order to duplicate the whole canvas size um, so since we have color going all the way to the edges we don't need corner marks we'll use those later on a different design and we need four of those tap one select it make sure your snapping is on i keep my distance at max and my velocity right in the middle and then you're just gonna slide it into place. You probably can't see it very well, but I have gold horizontal and vertical lines. You have to have them in both places. If it's tricky to get those, you need to turn all of your other layers off. Hopefully you can see my gold lines here and here. So if you um, really have a hard time getting those gold lines to show up, uh, just make sure you have one layer on at a time and it should work fine. Sometimes they don't show up in here. Sometimes they only show up out here. I wish it were consistent, but it's not. I can see my two that are next to each other there. All right, and then join them. I'm just gonna take a quick break. Scroll back and see if there's any questions. All right, I think if I missed a question, go ahead and type it again because I think I scrolled back pretty far, but just in case. All right, I'm going to go back into Liquify. You can use any Liquify you want. You just can't let anything move to the edges. So if you're doing a pinch and it's pulling things in, you're going to be being very careful not to pull anything in from the edges of the canvas at that first stage and at this stage. You can see our pink line here. This was those two small pink lines on the edges that have merged into one. Um, we don't need that grid anymore if you want to turn it off and get it out of your way. But you can see if you had a full width pink line over here and a full width pink line over here, you would have a really wide pink line right here right now. So that was why we just did a little on each side and now they're joined. And then just fill in the rest of your space. Again, without messing with the edges, you could even get some big ones in here. Oh, I messed with, that was way too big. Um, I don't want to, I personally don't want to mess with the other swirls too much, but this is all just personal choice, however you want to do it. And fill, fill, fill. I'm going a little fast. I'm also looking at trying to make sure I'm not making a big grid with um, things straight up and down or straight across from each other. I have two more designs I want to show you, so I'm going a little fast. If it's too fast, you can um, come back and watch this in IGTV. How did you let them snap? Brenda's asking. So Brenda, I made four duplicates of that first design. And then um, when you select them, this option comes up and you just need to set your snapping and then you, you put them into the four corners. Um, so you have the four duplicates and you put one in each corner. You don't shrink them, you just slide them. Sometimes it's easier to turn off other layers while you're doing that. Okay, so once you get it filled in as much as you want, it's a finished repeat. This is a finished repeat. You haven't messed with the edges at any step of the way, but to double check your repeat, you're gonna make uh, a total of five. I always keep the original one at the bottom. I always duplicate the original one. Uh, I don't duplicate a duplicate. I turn the bottom one off and just keep that as my original one by one block of the design. And then I select the four duplicates. Select, I'm still on snap. And I shrink them this time by grabbing the little blue dot 
and shrink them. And then I deselect the bottom two so they stay on the bottom. And I slide the top two up. And then I deselect one of those top ones and I reselect one of those bottom ones. This is just my method. You can slide them into the corners however you want before you merge them. So this is now a two by two pattern. And before you merge them, you're going to want to look really closely at the seams. Hopefully you don't have a seam, but by being able to toggle them on and off, you can see where that seam should be. And I don't see any offsets. And you're going to want to just, you, it's probably good enough just to look at one of them. I don't see any problems with this one. I have had problems with the liquify tool because I get too close to the edge sometimes. And I end up, especially on the tops, I end up pulling something off to the side a little bit. All right, and then you can merge those. So now you have a two by two and a one by one and you have a transparent background so you can do anything you want with that background which is nice the other thing that's super fun is pick one maybe this two by two duplicate it turn that original one off and play around with hue saturation brightness or gradient map and you can do all sorts of fun things So I used a duplicate because now I have this version that's separate from the other one. So I have the original and that, and you can do that as many times as you want. Um, if you love your design and you want to post it on a print on demand site or whatever, you can do as many colors as you want. I'm going to look for questions. Yes, Allie, this is so much fun. Um, I have been doing it for hours, which means I'm avoiding my geometric seamless repeat pattern class prep, but uh, but I've definitely been doing work on that too. And Tina says, I love your workflow, which is why you're one of my favorite Skillshare teachers. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you so much. And this is really cool and so amazing. Yes, really fun. And of course, you can kind of see your... Um, lines of color you can kind of see you know because we started out with all those lines you could um, change it up by doing some horizontal lines at the beginning as well um, I tested that let me show you what that looks like so this one has both I started out with that I blurred it Worked on those midlines. There's my one by one and my two by two. It's a little busier. And then there's another color version of it. I was having fun with some rainbow sherbet colors. <laughs> All right, so that's that. Um, this is very similar but I didn't blur it and I uh, I didn't you know it's basically the same except I didn't blur it I did this was when I was testing things out and I did it in a different uh, process I, I just started out with some stripes in the middle I used my corner marks to duplicate it to get it to the next stage and then I added more lines to finish it but there's this wasn't necessary to do it this way um, so you can start just like we did with the last one um, and not blur it um, get your midlines there so you can see where to go and space out your swirls or whatever designs you want to do oh I was gonna start with something entirely different um, and I even have notes right next to me and I didn't do it I want to show you I'm gonna go back to what I should have done at the very beginning if I were a good teacher. <laughs> um, I want you to test out some brushes. 
um, especially before the next lesson that I'm about to show you. How much time do I have? Oh, good. I have time. So go to painting and test out like oil paint and turpentine and um, some of the painty brushes. Start with maybe a dark color. Just kind of put, put some blobs down. Well, in the painty one, it's hard to, it kind of mixes. I'm going to start with a darker background. Um, and then switch to other brushes and do the same colors. And what I want to show you is that the liquify tool actually doesn't do, uh, it, it keeps the brush, it keeps it like um, the texture of the brush. It doesn't just blend things into a milky pattern. It keeps the texture somehow. So that's something to consider before you get started. And I'm just going to show you these couple quick examples. So if I get approximately the same thing happening on each one, and then just um, go to liquify and go to push. Um, yeah, I think the same settings are fine. Distortion just, you can, distortion with twirl means a whole bunch of twirls. Um, and distortion with push means that it's going to kind of make it a little more jaggedy. So just play around with the settings to see what you like. But you can see that no matter how much mixing I do, the texture of the brush is still there. It doesn't just mix it into the same look for each thing that you're doing. So even the brush kind of jaggedy edges, it's showing up jaggedy, right? You can see that really well here. So you're going to want to play with different brushes and see what kind of texture you're going to like for this next step. I've been mostly using the oil paint brush. I always get confused. I think it's not oriental brush. Let me just test it really quick. No, I think it was oil paint that I've been doing. All right, so we're on a new canvas. Barbara, yes, you can watch the replay in my IGTV. Oh, Sarah answered. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, someone's asking um, for more information about how to sell uh, my patterns. I am, I'm on, I'm officially on Society6, but it was a long time ago I added stuff. I haven't added stuff since then, and I um, am not super excited about Society6. Um, since I li like making repeat patterns, I put them on Spoonflower. And I do have a class on getting started on Spoonflower. All right, um, I'm choosing a gray background just because it's easier on the camera for, for IGTV here or for Instagram Live. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my grid back on. So go to the wrench tool, drawing guide, edit drawing guide, and you can just um, you can either go to quadrant symmetry or leave it on 2D grid. I'm going to increase my thickness and opacity just so it's easier to see on camera. All right. This takes practice. Let's see, what are some good colors? What I really like is to have a dark background. I'm going to test a dark background here and see what it looks like. I have my dark teals here. I'm gonna go with a dark blue. I'm gonna, there's a delay, so I'm just gonna wait a second and see what, what kind of camera reflection you're gonna have to bear with. <laughs> okay, um, I think I'll, I can live with that. All right, so I'm starting with a dark color and then um, I'm going to go to kind of a, a medium color. It really just, just pick a color. Don't think too much about it since it's just practice. 
Um, I'm on the oil brush. Or, oh, I'm still on oriental brush. I'm on oil paint, so let me clear that. And I'm just blobbing on some color. And I'm going to go to a much lighter color. <laughs> it's not letting me blob. I have to really tap. All right. It's just wanting to mix. Okay. There's some more color. So the biggest issue with this process is getting this similar amount of colors on the page when we do step two. And so I've been duplicating this one. Oh, you know what? I like that better. So I'm going to merge those and I'm going to call that my original. I'm going to duplicate this and turn one off and I'm going to use that one later. So I know I have the same colors going on in my next step. All right. So I'm on one of those layers and I'm just going to the push. Um, you can twirl, you can do anything you want. And I am just going to make this a little bit quick. Um, twirling. And just like any pattern in Procreate, you can't touch the edges. You can't touch all the edges of the canvas. It might be hard to see, but you do have some really light colors over here. So um, be careful, but you're going to want to get pretty close to the edge with your twirls on all four of these points. And I'm not making it a diamond. If you've taken my recent class, um, we do some work in a diamond. If you make a diamond here, it's kind of obvious later. All right, so I've twirled. I don't need to fill up the whole canvas. Again, this takes some practice. I've found that these ends are better off gone. So I go to my erase and I go to airbrush. Where is it? There it is, soft airbrush. And I'm just gonna kind of let those fade away. I might even fade that particular line in more. All right, you need your corner marks if you want to keep a transparent background on this. If you don't care about, no, I'm wrong. You do need it even if you don't care about a transparent background, you need your corner marks. So let's get a real opposing color here and go to inking or something where you can get a nice solid brush like Studio Pen. And we're just gonna put a little corner mark on opposing corners so that you have ink to the edges of all four sides by those two marks. We no longer need that grid, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And now we can duplicate this layer four times. Do the same thing we did before. So we're, I have snap already turned on and I'm moving these to the four corners. And I'm making sure I have my gold lines. This one was a little tricky. If it's tricky, turn off other layers and make sure you have them horizontally and vertically. Merge those layers and get rid of the orange marks or whatever color your marks are. Just going to wait a second, make sure people can get caught up. All right, and then you can turn on your original. You could create a brand new um, section of paint for this, but what I've been finding is that I get too much white or not enough white, and then 
uh, it looks like a different splotch than the rest. So this is a nice way to kind of keep some consistency. Go to liquify. And you can see you, you can see through this, right? So if you don't want to have any overlap, you need to um, just kind of push things around in ways that will keep this new section off of your other section. I'm also paying attention to how much I'm swirling it because I don't want this part to be really, really swirled when the rest of it wasn't or it will look very different. And the other thing I want to do is sort of push, maybe I went too small, sort of push to fill the gap a little bit. There's going to be a tiny gap on each of these midline sections. We can get this approximately to where you want it, and then we can merge those layers and kind of blend them together a little bit more. If I'm making this look easy, it's because I've practiced a lot. Don't get frustrated if it's uh, a little bit more challenging at first. I spent hours on it. Sometimes it looks great at this stage, and then you do the checking your pattern with the four, the two by two of your design, and it's not so great. So I'm all I'm doing is I'm kind of trying to not have too much overlap with my um, design that's around the outer edge here. So I'm pushing things into place a little bit. I might erase this section again. I think that's the same section I erased last time. <laughs> I do have a bigger white area here. So if I want to get rid of that, I can pinch and just kind of, it just kind of sucks in on itself. All right, so this can take some time. And I don't want to take up all the time just doing this part. And um, you can merge it or you can leave it. If you merge it, you could also just um, go ahead and do a group and duplicate the group and then leave one, turn it off and leave it and then flatten this one. There's police sirens outside. <laughs> So now I have them merged, and if I don't end up liking what I've done with the merge, I have my originals here. And now I can do a little bit more. Also, this stage, you have to be really careful not to mess with any um, of the edges, so you don't want to pull any color from the edges at all. All right. I don't need corner marks because I have colors all the way to the edges of everything. So I'm just doing my check. Oops, I need a fifth one. Turn that off. Select the four duplicates. Snapping is on, so I snap them right to one end. Deselect two. Slide two of them up. Deselect one of those, reselect one of those so I can slide them both at the same time. And then you're going to want to check your pattern again. But that's your repeat pattern. That's a two by two of it. So to check your pattern again, you can come in and look along the lines of, oops, the edge of your design. And here I have a, I have a problem right here. So this problem is likely because as I was doing that last stage and I pushed, um, after I merged those layers, I pushed things around, um, I pulled from the very edge because it's just in this one section. So this pattern is not usable. So I can delete all of that and thankfully I have these originals. So let's see what happens if I just um, 
Go ahead and duplicate that group and flatten it. And then we'll try the same thing with these originals where I didn't push any pixels around after I merged them, right? So I'm going to check my two by two. I need to turn these off. There's another thing that could have happened. I think that's where the problem was. Yep, I don't have a problem now with that. I think it was right here. I wonder what's going on. I don't know if you can hear the sirens, but. All right, so this works. So now I have a pattern with no problems. I can merge those four layers. So I have the two by two and I have the one by one and you can um, change your background color since you're working totally separate from the background. Um, and of course you can play with hue saturation brightness or gradient map to get all sorts of color variations as well. So that's how you do those. I'm going to check for questions really quick. When you snap the four layers in the quadrants, which layer is the background? Um, the way I make patterns, I don't have a background. I, the background is, is the background on Procreate. So, um, So if you, if you don't care about changing the background color, if you like your one by one with this, um, you know, whatever background color you've created it with, you could actually just three finger swipe down and copy all. Oh, and playing around with gradient map, this is a good uh, method as well. And then uh, paste. And now you have the black background all on that layer, right? Um, to make a two by two, it's the same thing. I mean, yeah, two by two grid. It's the same thing. You just put one of these smaller versions into each corner. But the cool part is when you're messing around with gradient map or hue saturation and brightness, um, the, the background layer is um, being applied to, the, these color changes are being applied to the background layer as well. If you did this step with the version with the transparent background, that background color is going to stay whatever it's set at and only the colors on the swirls will change. I hope that makes sense. Um, I don't know about metallics and spoon flower. Somebody's asking. Hi, Julie. Um, which layer am I working on? I'm not quite sure if I understand. So your original question, she makes stuff. I don't know um, what account that is. Uh, when you snap the four layers in the quadrants, which layer is the background? Hmm. I'm not quite sure what you mean. So if we're back to this one by one, let's see how much time I have left. Okay. If we're back to this one by one, you're just working uh, with that layer. You're duplicating it and you're selecting, you can select one at a time and snap them into the four corners. Um, but it's just a duplicate of this one by one and it's separate from the background. When you snap the images, what layer are you working on? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're, you're working on one layer at a time. You're just moving a duplicate 
shrunken down to a quarter size and moving one of each of those into the four corners, four different layers. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, so um, the gradient map is really fun. You can get lots of other colors. Hue, saturation, brightness, uh, you can, um, you're limited. It, it'll change the colors how it wants to change them. Um, and you have a lot of control in gradient map. All right, was that all I was gonna show you? I was gonna, um, so, so that's one we just did is also the same as this. Um, I spent forever on this one though. I don't know why. You know, something I wanna show you also is um, to, to start out, I'm gonna just gonna start a new canvas. When you're getting some color on the page and you've got all these blobs of all these different colors. I like to erase some of it because you you can probably um, just test this out and play around. But when you start to swirl, you you if you want some of the background color to be incorporated into your design, you have to pull it in like that. So by exposing some of the background initially, you have that throughout your design already. So that's kind of nice, just erasing some of that background. Ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> you guys will have to tag me so I can see all of your addictions for this, even if you don't do seamless repeats. There is a class on Skillshare. I can never remember the guy's name. Rich, Rich Armstrong, maybe? Can we see your patterns on a large scale on fabric? I haven't printed any of these on fabric yet because I just figured out how to do these. Um, but um, if you're in my Facebook group, I recently posted some fabrics that arrived in the mail, some pictures. I can't remember if I posted them on my Instagram. It may have been in the stories. All right, I'm just going through making sure I'm showing you everything that I wanted to show you. So this design, I started with this. And if you're not careful, this, is, this black is the background color, which means I need corner marks because I don't have color all the way to the edge. And you can't get your corner marks on the color that you do have. So you need to have teensy tiny corner marks or you need to just move the lines to the edge so you don't have to worry about corner marks. This design is just simply um, one big swirl and made, I made a grid out of it. But with this, this is the expand. Let's see if I'm on the right layer. So if you go into liquify, you just have to play around with all of these. Um, expand kind of makes these little bubbles. Oh, that was a big one. See that? Yeah, so just follow all the rules of one, not touching the edges of the canvas in your initial um, uh, swirling. So you, you can touch edges if you're using the monoline brush with the 2D grid and drawing assist turned on so you have perfectly horizontal and vertical lines. Um, other than that, when you're doing your swirling, or you can see here, I got super close to the edge with this little bubble. Don't touch the edge. Um, and then uh, put your corner marks on if you want to put your corner marks on, if you need to, I should say. Um, also, when you're doing your initial design, Um, make sure, I don't have this first step on this one, make sure you're not touching, or make sure you get close to the edges on those midlines without moving the ink, paint, whatever, pixels. Um, let's see, moving your things to the four corners and then doing more twirls 
without moving the pixels that are around the edges. And then you're done. Check your pattern. You have to check your pattern for offsets or gaps, um, snapping, make sure you have all your layers turned off if you're having a hard time snapping and just work on one layer at a time. What else? Hmm. I think that's all. <laughs> Matthew has, um, Matthew's, the account says MJN Art um, has recently found the addiction of seamless repeat patterns in Procreate. My plan is working. Um, and it's, it's super addicting. It's super addicting. It takes practice though. It really does. So don't get discouraged. 